whose area is Rutinian and allowed to thrive on another part of the island. It's not, it's not, it does not accumulate to their life cycles. Uh -huh. So part of the answer is the Fish and Wildlife Service's job is to create and maintain habitat for species recovery for the endangered and listed species. Correct. And the job for the people of the island is to protect what is sacred to them, which is And the original species. landowners can protect that land quite well. Let and them the assure people you. of the island, though. Yes. It the is original the landowners and the people of Guam are well placed ourselves to take care of our habitat and take care of our endangered species without the Fish and Wildlife Service. To me, it's a fundamental disagreement. If you want the Fish and Wildlife Service to do the job, you can have them yeah. do the job. But, but my, they, my, my question was, um, yes, the Fish and Wildlife may suggest um, what about moving it somewhere else, or, um, but how can that be an option? Why, why is that an option? Because, not, because species, the particular species, the most, the most difficult species to reintroduce is the cocoa. And the cocoa well, is attacked by Snakes. But there's has also, nothing to do with habitat. But so the reintroduction species. could make sense in other places. But the, yes, but and there are other species. But I'm giving you the example. It takes such a. In, no, I'm not saying it's a wildlife refuge. I'm just saying it's a sacred area. Yeah. How can we say we're going to take all the plants in this sacred area and say it could be here instead? There are many places in Guam that have some of those endangered plants. But my. How can you it hinder their life cycle that is so secured to that specific area and say it's okay for you to stay to live here? I don't know how that can complete or how I don't know what kind of studies that you guys can provide us with saying that's okay then. I don't know. That's Again, my biggest question. The reason the Fish and Wildlife Service is at Retigian is because of our request through Governor Abbott <coughs> to place certain species on the endangered and threatened species. And from that came many things that happened, including the refuge at Retidia. So that's the cards we're dealt. That's what we're dealing with today. And so we have to be very careful as we look at the environmental issues going into this whole SDZ issue. Um, and I would encourage you to please come up to, I think the first one's at Okudu. Yeah. Come up. Yeah, please come and ask directly those questions to the experts in the room. I'm not an expert in the room, but I'm saying yes. that I'm saying that the original landowner issues are very distinct from all the other issues you're glittering about. Their issues are, you know, they're they're not as fond of the fish and wildlife service being there as, as you are. They believe that they can do critical habitats themselves. They believe Doug Wong, which the Department of Agriculture, is really at the lead of brown tree snake eradication. So they believe that we have local resources that equal, if not surpass, what Fish and Wildlife Service is doing. But I think what you said really illustrates two key points that have been, been emphasized in the students' learning, which is one, the importance of understanding the history behind yeah. policy, yeah. and number two, always looking at unforeseen, unanticipated negative consequences. consequences, because what you've described is a situation where Guam leadership intervened, and we basically ended up shooting ourselves in the yeah. face, yeah. and, yeah. and unwittingly, unwittingly so. So I just want to thank you on behalf of the class. Let's give her a round.